Hi, welcome to Cannabis Consumption Methods and Products. Today, we're going to identify common cannabis and cannabis-infused products that are found in the marketplace and describe various methods of cannabis consumption. So when it comes to types of cannabis products, um, typically they will include dried cannabis flower or, you know, bud um, concentrates. So that's like your wax, dabs, shatter, butter, or sauce um, that which, you know, those are vaporized or used to make oils. Um, it also includes tinctures and edibles and topicals or edibles include brownies, cakes, candies, and beverages, um, and topicals, which are like your pain salves and things that you can put on your skin. So not stuff that you're actually digesting. So we're going to take a look at all of those uh, different types and, you know, what, how you use them and what are some of the most common things that you're going to see uh, as an employee, perhaps in a dispensary or um, in other aspects of the cannabis industry. So before we get into that, first, let's take a look at how dried flour is typically measured. So in a dispensary, you're going to see that the cannabis buds or flour is typically packaged and sold in units that are designated both in the metric and the standard weight, um, the metric system and then the standard weight measurements. So for example, if you look at uh, it starts with a gram, right? Let's uh, turn on the thing here. So we start with a gram and then we go to an eighth and an eighth is about uh, 3.5 grams. Well, typically if you buy an eighth of cannabis, it's going to be measured at 3.5 grams. Um, and that is about one eighth of an ounce. And so you see an ounce is 28 grams. Now, then you have a quarter which is about seven grams. And then you have a half an ounce, which is going to be, you know, approximately a half an ounce is going to be 14 grams. And the reason why I'm saying approximately is because one ounce is three point, or excuse me, 28.395 grams. So, um, but when it's measured out for the purposes of selling cannabis, it's just at the 28 mark. So just something important to not really important, but just something to keep in mind there. So when we talk about uh, cannabis oils and extracts and concentrates, so one of the most popular types of cannabis oil is called Rick Simpson oil, um, RSO, or it can be referred to as, you might see referred to as FICO, which stands for full extract cannabis oil. Um, these oils are for ingestion or sublingual administration, which sublingual means under the tongue. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Now, unlike concentrates that are intended to be inhaled, it's the Rick Simpson oil. You can see here, it's very dark brown and it does typically come in a syringe like this so that it can be measured out and dosed and served um, in very small increments. The term RSO actually came from this Canadian cannabis activist named Rick Simpson, and he applied it topically to heal his skin cancer. Now, he used naphtha or uh, petroleum ether as the solvent to extract the oil, but those solvents can leave like toxic compounds in the oil. So that made it less safe for consumption. Uh, for people who were treating serious illnesses. And you can look online and see all kinds of uh, recipes or methods for how to make Rick Simpson oil. Um, it's a very potent, all the, all the extracts and oils are very potent. You can actually melt down Rick Simpson oil into a carrier oil, such as like coconut oil, um, MCT coconut oil, which is monochain triglycerides. Uh, that's a really good one to melt down. And then that way you can have your, excuse me, that way you have your um, your cannabis oil that you can use for different stuff. So uh, then you have extracts or concentrates. And so that's going to be uh, like your shatter, might be known as wax or crumble or sugar. Um, one ounce of flour is about the equivalent of four grams of extract. 
it is uh, used to, you know, it can be vaporized or inhaled. So when you separate the active oils from the plant material, then it produces this kind of semi-lucent, uh, golden, honey-like oil, right? And it'll have, it happens to be in different, a couple of different uh, formats. And we can look at some of those here. So one of the most popular ways of extracting the cannabis oil is a process called or butane hash oil, right? Or it's a product called butane hash oil. And that will come in a, a lot of different versions, right? So you might see any of these um, names at the dispensary. BHO is what it's referred to. And it's when butane is used as the solvent to extract the oils from the plant material. Uh, it tends to be very sticky and it has a really distinct golden appearance. And the aromas, you can really smell the terpenes. This is when you really get the benefit of the terpenes. You really get that nice pungent smell. Um, it's not like regular hash. So regular hash is just like the pressed resin from the cannabis plant. Um, it's not like regular hash. This is a lot more concentrated and it's just ha has a bunch of different consistencies. There's many methods of extraction as well as many different variables that will affect the consistency of the final material. So when you're talking about like shatter, wax, butter, sauce, crumble, um, sugar, oil, diamonds, right? And you'll, and new ones kind of are created all the time too. You're really referring to the texture or the viscosity uh, of the final product. And you can see here in this graphic, um, a lot of that is based on, like I said, different variables such as, you know, is it made from fresh buds or dried buds? Uh, or is it made from frozen buds? What is the consistency? Is it malleable, like kind of like a Play-Doh, you know, type of thing or a taffy? Um, or is it solid, right? So you have like a, the diamonds, those are tend to be solid. So a lot of different variables that affect that as well. But these are some of the ones that you'll see um, commonly in a dispensary. So when we talk about different consumption methods, there's a couple different ways that, or a couple different factors that affect, you know, how cannabis is going to affect you, how it affects the person. So uh, those two factors are the plant and the person. And when it talk, when we're talking about factors that are related to the plant, you know, this includes the type of cannabis product, how potent it is, or rather the cannabinoid content of the product, right? So how, what is the THC percentage? Um, what is the versus CBD, CBN, any of those other cannabinoids that we've discussed before? And also the method of consumption. And that's what we're going to get into a little bit today. Uh, different methods of consumption have different ways that they affect the body. So factors that are related to the person, um, just like with any other medicine or anything else that you would ingest into your body or put into your body, you know, it's going to be based on your metabolism, um, you know, your food consumption prior to cannabis consumption. So that's, um, you know, that's an important one there. Uh, whether or not you as an individual, you know, what is your tolerance level? And then also what is your experience with cannabis? Because there is a psychoactive, um, cannabis has psychoactive effects, as we know, or some aspects of it do. And I, there is a an aspect of that that can affect how it affects your body overall. 